In this experiment, we're gonna be converting isoborneol to camphor. Isoborneol is a secondary alcohol, camphor is a ketone, which means that this process is an oxidation reaction. Notice that we're not using any of the common oxidizing reagents that you learn about in your textbook, such as PCC or sodium dichromate. Those reagents include the chromium-6 ion, which is a carcinogen, meaning that it causes cancer. So instead of using this chromium-6 reagents, we're gonna be using sodium hypochlorate, NaOCl. This is the active ingredient that is found in household bleach, like what you would use in your laundry. And then a little bit of acetic acid, CH3COOH. The acetic acid that we're going to be using is referred to as glacial acetic acid. Glacial just simply means that it is concentrated. That's a term that we only apply to acetic acid, so like concentrated hydrochloric acid, we don't call that glacial. Glacial is the word that we only use when we're talking about concentrated acetic acid. We're gonna weigh out about 3.86 grams of isoborneol. This is a really, really strong smelling solid. Um, smells kind of like Something that you would maybe rub on yourself if you had sore muscles and it's also um, some pretty large chunks in here so I'm going to try to work pretty quickly to avoid having to smell too much of this I always kind of joke that this smells kind of like my grandpa you can imagine what that might smell like so this is gonna be our starting mass I've transferred the isoborneol to this Erlenmeyer flask and I'm gonna add a magnetic stirrer. The next ingredient that we'll be adding is the glacial acetic acid. Remember glacial just simply means that it's concentrated. I've pre-measured the two milliliters of the glacial acetic acid and I'll add that now. And then we'll start the magnetic stirrer to, to start getting this stuff mixing together. Next we'll be adding the bleach. I have measured out about five milliliters of the bleach. The label on the bottle doesn't tell me exactly what the concentration of the bleach is. And so I'm just kind of guessing five milliliters is an appropriate amount. One of the nice things about this experiment is that we are gonna be monitoring the concentration of the bleach or the sodium hypochlorite through the whole experiment. So if I've not added enough, I'll know and I'll be able to add some more. We are now going to add some more bleach. I've got 40 milliliters measured out and I'm gonna be using a separatory funnel to add the rest of this bleach. I want to add it slowly over a period of at least 10 minutes. This is a really exothermic reaction, so I don't wanna to add too much at once or it will get too hot. I'm gonna be monitoring the temperature by putting the thermometer directly into the Erlenmeyer flask. And just in case the reaction gets too hot, I'm gonna place this metal dish underneath the Erlenmeyer flask and I'll be able to create an ice water bath right away just in case the temperature gets too hot. And like I said, we'll be monitoring the temperature the whole entire time and just kind of slowly adding small portions of the bleach into the solution. After each little addition of bleach, I am going to check the temperature on the thermometer just to make sure that the temperature is not jumping up too quickly. My goal is to keep the temperature below 50 degrees Celsius. If we get all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius, there's a possibility that instead of oxidizing to a ketone, I'll oxidize all the way to a carboxylic acid, which is not the product that we're looking for. So you can see that just with that small addition of bleach, the temperature jumped up to almost 30 degrees Celsius. We're still quite a ways away from 50, so I'll go ahead and put some more in. And we'll just kind of keep monitoring the temperature. So I'm just gonna be repeating this process, like I said, over a period of at least 10 minutes, adding a little bit of the bleach, watching the temperature just to make sure that it doesn't jump up too high and repeating this process slowly until all of the bleach has been added. I've finished adding all 40 milliliters of the bleach, so I'm gonna get the separatory funnel out of my way. We're just gonna let this sit and react and stir for about 30 minutes. I don't need to worry about temperature anymore, so I can get rid of this little metal dish and also get rid of the thermometer 
It's important that we make sure that we always have excess bleach present in this flask during the 30 minute reaction period. I'm gonna be monitoring the presence of excess bleach using starch iodide paper. This is kind of like pH paper. Uh, I'm just going to be testing a little bit of the solution. If we have excess bleach present, I'm gonna get a really dark blue, kind of black color on the starch iodine paper. Through the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna be testing with starch iodine paper just to make sure that I have plenty of bleach present. If I don't have enough bleach present, then I can just add a little bit more. Just wanna make sure that I don't run out. So in order to keep this safe during the 30 minute reaction period, I'm gonna be using some of this film to cover the top of the Erlenmeyer flask. And once I get it all sealed up, I'm just gonna let it sit and stir for about 30 minutes and continue testing it with starch iodine paper about once every five minutes to make sure there's plenty of bleach. The solution has been stirring for about 20 minutes. I've been testing it with starch iodide paper about once every five minutes. And as you can see, the color on the starch iodide paper is definitely starting to lighten up. It is still blue, but it's just not as dark as it used to be, which means we're starting to run out of bleach. And that means that I want to add a little bit more. I'm gonna put a little bit more bleach into the flask and then I'll retest just to make sure that there's plenty of bleach present. At the end of the reaction, I'll be able to neutralize any excess bleach that's present. So I'm not worried about adding too much. All that I'm concerned about is just making sure that I always have enough. So once I get a little bit in there and swirl it up, I'm gonna test again just to make sure that I've added a good amount. And there we see we have that nice dark color again. So we'll let it continue reacting. It's the end of our 30 minute reaction period. We're gonna do one final starch iodide test. This time, however, we are testing to make sure that we have reacted all of the bleach. We do not want any bleach present, which means that we do not want this blue color that we're getting on the starch iodide paper. To remove excess bleach, we'll be using a solution of saturated sodium bisulfite, NaHSO3. We're just gonna continue adding the saturated sodium bisulfite solution until we get a negative test with the starch iodide paper. That means not a dark blue color change with the starch iodide paper. And we will just add as much as it takes to get um, a, a test, a negative test on the starch iodide paper. It doesn't matter if we have to add a lot, we'll be able to clean this solution up during the filtration process. All of the bleach has been neutralized, so we're gonna put this solution on an ice water bath and let it finish crystallizing so that we can filter it out. The directions tell us that our solution, not the ice water bath, but the solution itself, needs to get all the way down to five degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna be using a thermometer to monitor the temperature as this solution cools. The solution has cooled down to below five degrees Celsius, which means that it is ready to filter. I'll be rinsing the solution with some ice cold water. Once the solution is done filtering, I'm going to set it aside and let it dry overnight. And tomorrow we will do a purification process. So this is our crude camphor product. It's been drying overnight. We're gonna get a mass on this. I'm gonna be transferring it to a clean watch glass. And when I filtered this yesterday, my little stir bar ended up in the product. So I'm just gonna set that aside. 
this smells um, very strong. Not quite as strong as the Isoborneal. It's got um, a real kind of medicinal smell, a little bit minty. Kind of makes my eyes water a little bit. Here's our mass of crude product. This is our crude camper. We are gonna purify it by this, a sublimation process. So in the sublimation process, as you know, sublimation is when you go directly from a solid to a gas. And camper does that when it's heated gently. So we're gonna be transferring it into this beaker and we're gonna be heating it very gently on the hot plate. It's really important that we work at a low heat so that we don't um, char or burn any of this camper. We just want it to heat up into a gas sublime. As it heats up to a gas, we are gonna catch it on the underside of this watch glass, which I'm gonna be chilling with some ice cubes. So what you want to be looking at is the underneath of this watch glass. This is where the crystals are going to start forming. It's gonna take a while for the temperature to get warm enough for the crystals to actually start to form. One of the things that I'm going to need to do during this process is just kind of constantly drain the water the melting water off of the top of the beaker. So I have a pipette handy that I can use to just drain water as it is formed and replace the ice as it is being formed. And as the crystals are forming underneath the watch glass, I'm gonna be transferring them to a clean watch glass so that we can get a final mass. Okay, so this has been subliming for a while. Let's take a look at what we've got. We don't get a lot of product from this we can see that we do have some crystals that are formed along the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is very carefully transfer these crystals to a pre-weighed watch glass so you can get a mass on them, and then we're gonna get their boiling or their melting point. This is a watch glass that I pre-weighed before this experiment started because I know that this experiment does not produce very much product. And this 44.778 grams is the mass of the empty watch glass. I've transferred our small amount of camper and we're gonna get a mass of this watch class. The difference here is the mass of the product that we've actually synthesized. Our sample of camper is that very small white grain on the left-hand side, and you're gonna to have to watch closely to be able to see it melt. Starting to melt at 124 degrees. it's done at 124 degrees.